So let's now talk about the importance of, of powder and the characteristics of the powder and why is it so important to us. First of all, the majority of APIs are going to be uh, powder. So that, that's a key factor starting out there. And secondly, most manufacturing processes are going to involve powder. The majority of our dosage forms are powder. So that's a, a key thing that we need to keep track of. We want to be able to uh, take into account the blending of the API and understand how the API and the excipients are going to blend. And we want to make sure that we get a good uniform blend, not only of the API, but also of the excipients. Particularly if we have some functional <coughs> excipients in smaller quantities, such as a mag stearate or something like that. We also need to make sure that we understand, if we're doing a tablet, how it's going to flow and empty from the feed hopper. Because a lot of times at a commercial scale, we're going to have <clears throat> hundreds of kilos in the hopper, not just a few kilos. And we need to make sure that the last few kilos coming out of that hopper is the same quantitative formulation as the first few kilos coming out of that hopper. We also need to make sure that it fills in the feed frame and the die cavity and that the mag stearate has been very well dispersed so that we don't have any problems on compression or the ejection of the tablets. <clears throat> so the flow properties of this powder becomes very critical. So we have to understand how the, not only do the individual things flow, but how well they flow together. So we're going to look at such things as bulk and tap density, and we'll talk a little bit later about that as well. We want to look at the shear properties of the material and the compressibility of it. We want to look at the particle size and shape and distribution of our material. So particularly the API, if it's in a high concentration in the formulation, and if that particle size changes any, we want to know what the effects are going to be on the formulation and whether or not we're going to have any concerns as far as solubility goes if something changes in our material. Or what about the moisture content? If we're doing a wet granulation, what does that moisture do to this material? And if we dry it too much, are we going to have a problem with electrostatic charge? And as far as the shape goes, this just shows you to an extreme what you can possibly get as far as a plate-like material for one of either one of your excipients, or in this case, a particular API. And this isn't too bad if you know up front and you deal with it, but if all of a sudden you have a material that starts to have these plates that continue to get larger and larger, the flowability of this material is going to be, continue to become more of a problem. And the other thing we want to take into consideration is if we start to see large changes in our particle size of any material, you're going to start to see a very dramatic change in the surface area. And where this can become a, a concern is if we're doing a mag stearate that we're using to coat material to prevent sticking, if all of a sudden our surface area becomes much larger, the amount of mag stearate that we have in the formulation might not be sufficient anymore to do uh, appropriate lubrication. So the, the next thing we want to talk about is the CARS index. And we want to be able to um, use this as an indication of how our material is going to behave. A CARS index is determined by taking the tap density minus the bulk density divided by the tap density times 100. In our sample calculation here, we come up with a CARS index of 28%. It was fairly common uh, tap densities of about 0.6 and a bulk density of about 0.4. And what we can use this for is that we can estimate our, how our powder is going to flow and what is it going to look like. And these are uh, by no means um, etched in stone that a material that has a car index of, let's say, 25 is going to be a poor flowing versus a car of 24 that's going to be fair. Uh, 
these are just kind of rough guidelines that you can use to say, okay, if, if you know your material is going to have a car index of somewhere above 18, flowability may ultimately become a problem. If you have a car index of something less than 17, probably flowability is not going to be too much of a concern for what you're doing. If we talk about um, the API, and we know we need to make sure that we take that in consideration for our scale-up, what properties do we need to make sure that they're considering when they're doing their <clears throat> scale-up? We need to make sure that the chemical stability doesn't change, um, sensitivity to moisture or light, which usually is not a problem, uh, solubility shouldn't change too much, but where we can sometimes see a problem is all of a sudden we start to see uh, some polymorph issues, where what used to be a fairly pure material now all of a sudden starts to see a little bit more of a polymorphic change. The other thing that is much more more common of a problem is the particle size, shape, and or particle distri size distribution curve dramatically changes. And that's where we can start to see problems when we're doing our work as far as scaling up. So we need to make sure that whatever material we're going to use for our scale up is going to be very representative of the material that's going to always be supplied. Because otherwise we could spend a lot of time and effort doing our DOE work when in reality we're using the wrong material for that. And some of the uh, critical factors if we look at what type of dose that we're looking at uh, for the active. What do you need to be concerned with? If it's a high dose material such as uh, greater than 250 milligrams or somewhere around that, again these are not hard and fast rules, it's just a rough guideline. We need to definitely be very concerned about the flowability of the API. We also need to be concerned about the compressibility of the API and the availability of the API. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. We want to look at mid-range dose of somewhere around, the, let's say, 25 to 250 milligrams. And availability may not be as much of a problem depending on where you're at in that range, but definitely flowability is still a problem, or a potential problem, I should say, not a, necessarily a problem. And if we're looking at the low dose, uh, things that are less than 25 milligrams, <clears throat> handling procedures might be a concern if this is a very potent compound. Um, stability might become a concern much more so is content uniformity becomes more of a concern. Because the dose is much less, flowability usually isn't a problem unless you're trying to make a very, very small tablet. Something around, um, let's say, a, a 75 milligram tablet or so, total tablet weight. But usually at, at, when you get to the lower doses, you can dilute out the concerns about flowability of the API. And this is something that um, I like to bring up because it's something that people a lot of times will forget is for all of our design of experiments and everything that we do, we need to make sure that we have the appropriate amount of API available. Because once we start dealing in larger batches and we do a number of experimental um, batches that you need to do for your DOE work, you consume a lot of API very quickly. And just looking at this, even for a batch size as small as 50,000 tablets, which is not a very big batch, if your strength is around 100 milligrams, you're using up 5 kilos at a batch. And if it's 500 milligrams, you're using up 25 kilos at a batch. So you're consuming a very large amount of material very quickly. And if you don't plan this into your API, manufacturer schedule, you're not going to end up with the appropriate amount of material at the, at the time that you need it. So if we look at how it, getting more into the scale of concern, the design of experiments and what are our objectives? We, like we mentioned, we want to determine that design space. We want to make sure that we're 
providing the optimum manufacturing parameters that can provide something that's very reproducible. We want to minimize any batch-to-batch -batch variation and support scientifically the in-process and the release specifications. Now, I want to take the time here to define two terms. A critical process parameter, which is what we want to determine is which of our parameters are critical. And this is something where the variability could impact a critical quality attribute of our product. And a critical quality attribute of the product is something that must be controlled to ensure that the product meets its intended safety, efficacy, stability, and performance. So when should we start the DOE work? And when do we really start considering our scale-up. We want to make sure that we have an established process and that the equipment train is determined so that we know we're going to do, let's say, a blend of roller compaction, a blend with the lubricant and compress, or we're going to do a just a direct blend and compress, or we're going to do a wet granulation, or <clears throat> whatever it might be. But we need to make sure that we have that train determined before we start doing a lot of scale-up work. Otherwise, it could all change, and that work is for naught. We usually want to start this no later than phase 2B, and definitely prior to phase 3. And we also need to know what our strengths are going to be for that particular active, or at least a range that we're going to be working with. We need to know, are we going to be working with a 25 milligram tablet or a 250 milligram tablet? And why this can become so difficult is, <clears throat> let's just take a look at a process of a simple wet granulation compression and coating for a tablet. And these are the different uh, process factors that you need to evaluate to see which of these might be a critical parameter that you need to study. So we need to determine which of these are a critical process parameter and which of these might affect the critical quality attributes. Now hopefully we don't have to study each of these, but we do need to make sure that we address each of these. And the responses that we would look at are typically such things as this. For the powder blend, we want to look at the content uniformity. For granulation, we want to look at the size and shape and distribution for the particles. We want to look at the density, both bulk and tap density. We want to look at the flow rate, uh, moisture content, and again, content uniformity. And for tablets, we'll look at such things as weight and hardness and so forth. 